Hello, everyone. My name is Yvette Rodriguez. I am the president of AEM, Marketing and Communications. I'm also the co-founder of La Comab. And we're very excited to have this conversation here. I am honored to be having a conversation with um, Rosie Perez, Oscar-nominated actress, as well as an activist and a dear friend and the co-chair of the Latino affinity group, La Agenda, at the Academy. Hi, Rosie. How are you? I'm very good, Eva. How are you? Great. I'm excited to have this conversation with you today and to share it with all the folks that are listening to us, which are all Latinos from all walks of life, from entertainment to tech. And, um, and, and I thought it would be a great opportunity, number one, to talk a little bit about your trajectory in Hollywood. And then also to end to talk about the work that you and I are doing together with the Academy in, um, and for to accelerate access and to help the Latino community in Hollywood. So welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited. Yeah. So um, this, is, this is a very a multi-generational group of people, but I would love you to start by telling us about your first break and how you got into Hollywood with your very first film, Do the Right Thing, which a lot of people think they know that story, but they don't. So maybe like a synopsis of the beginning, and then we can talk about, you know, what happened afterwards. Sure. So I was a college student, a biochem major, uh, going to school out in Los Angeles. I had two years under my belt, and I decided that I did not like Los Angeles and I wanted to go home. The night before I was leaving, I got invited to a nightclub to um, just hang out and party. I went with my girlfriend. I met Spike Lee. I didn't know who he was. We got into an argument. He said, tonight is fate. I said, you wish. <laughs> and, uh, and he gave me his card. I threw away the card. My girlfriend took it out of the garbage can and called him the next day. And he said, I want to talk to the Puerto Rican girl. And that intrigued me because um, in Los Angeles, nobody knew what I was. And, and so I grabbed the phone. and I was like, how do you know I was Puerto Rican? He goes, you're kidding, right? And um, he said, I want you to audition for this movie. I said, I'm not an actress. And he said, oh, yes, you are. And that movie happened to be do the right thing. And I had to fly back to Los Angeles to audition. And I got the role. And that was my entree into the film uh, business that you know today everyone knows do the right thing but you're although it was it was it was a hit back then when it first came out but that didn't necessarily mean that you became this big huge actress right like you had to fight for for roles can you tell us like what the next steps were like what your your experience was Sure. After Do the Right Thing, everybody said, oh, you are set. You're going to be in in Hollywood. I could not get arrested. I didn't, couldn't get representation. Nothing. Everyone thought it was just a fluke, a one off. And I was determined to be a part of this industry, not to prove anybody wrong. It was just because that's what I wanted. And I was going to go get it. And so um, someone told me about this mag magazine, industry magazine called Backstage. I did my homework. I saw there was an opening uh, for open, open audition for this HBO TV movie called Criminal Justice. I tried out for it and I got it. And um, the actress on that film was Jennifer Grey. And she said, who are, is your representation? And at that time I did have a rep for like a few minutes and I fired that person. Um, and I said, I, I don't have anybody. And she introduced me to her agent, which was a big powerful agent. And that was a game changer. Still, it was very, very, very difficult. I kept getting these really terrible offers to either, you know, a straight offer or offer to audition. And it was really hard. And I just kept saying no. And finally, I told them, listen, I want the Jessica Lane roles. And they said, well, you're not Jessica Lane. I go, not yet. Give me the opportunities that she has and get me in the room. And then the rest is up to me. And so that's what happened. They did that. And the next thing I booked was Untamed Heart starring Christian Slater and Marissa Tomei. And the next thing after that I booked was White Man Can't Jump. And after White Man Can't Jump, it got easier. Not, not better, 
but easier. It was still a struggle, to be honest. And then the next film, was that the next film, your Oscar-nominated performance? Oh, the next film, yes, uh, <laughs> was Fearless. And once again, it was not for a Puerto Rican American. Untamed Heart was not for a Puerto Rican American. Uh, White Man Can't Jump was not for Puerto Rican American. And Fearless wasn't either. And my agents got me in the room. They called me back four times, four times, because the studio was afraid of an interracial relationship between me and the other actor, Jeff Bridges. And so they kept having me audition over and over and over again. And then they would test it. Um, and it, was, it wasn't until the producers of the film, Paula Weinstein and her husband, Mark, got rest his soul, the director, Peter Weir, and the star of the movie, Jeff Bridges, fought for me. And they said, enough is enough. This is embarrassing. Just give her the role. And I got the role. And I ended up getting nominated for an Academy Award and a Golden Globe and the New York's Critic Award. And it was amazing. Oh my goodness. We were, that was like, I remember that moment. It makes me want to tear up. We're so <laughs> proud of you and so happy for you. And we need more of those moments for all of the talented Latinos that are in Hollywood behind the scenes in front of the scenes. And, um, and I feel like I want to take it to like where we are today, right? You're, you're, you have a series on Apple TV now and then the bilingual series, which I love and obviously HBO, right? Um, the flight attendant, and now you're working on, on, on a couple of series. So this is a really hot moment for you. But you and I have been working behind the scenes as co-chairs of the Academy's Latino Affinity Group, La Agenda. And I just want to like sort of share with the folks that are listening to us um, what that experience has been like, you know, like what it is that we're trying to do for that next generation of Latinos. Because unfortunately, while there is some progress and the, the truth is, is that we're, there's not enough progress and the data doesn't lie. And, um, and so what are your thoughts about today and, and, and Hollywood today? I think that there have been slight improvements, but it hasn't gotten better. It has improved slightly and we cannot be complacent. We cannot be overjoyed by the crumbs on, that are on the table. We need to say, there is our seat at the table and we are going to sit down and you will serve us properly as you have served every other person that is at this table. Um, and I really was excited in joining this affinity group with you um, because we are kindred spirits. We have a tenacity that is undeniable and we have a passion for our people that is undeniable. And I wanna pay it forward. You know, there were not a lot of Latinos to be uh, quite honest that helped me out in my career, but there were a few and I never forgot that. And even other people in the industry such as Jennifer Gray, helping me get the proper representation was a game changer. And, you know, learning the ropes, you know, I basically had my college courses on White Man Can't Jump, Untamed Heart, you know, do, uh, do the right thing, um, all of that. Um, and I wish somebody was around in the beginning of my career to say, this is how the game is played. This is how you are to show up. This is how you are to act within a room. All those things really matter. And the affinity group for me is helping to move the needle of inclusion in this industry, in the entertainment industry, and also for them to understand that we are not a monolith, but we are a community. We are one. And you need to understand who we are. You need to get to know who we are and you need to serve us properly. You know what you just reminded me of? My career, I started my career in New York in the record industry, and my mentor was a Jewish woman from Ohio. And honestly, I would have, I just don't, I know that I would have made it on some level because it's me and I know the work that I put in, but really she showed me the path and she was not a Latina. And frankly, the sad thing about our community, and I do want to address it here because it's important, this crab in a bucket mentality, this only one person can be in, uh, in power in a, in, a, in a studio or in a room. And 
I think that's why I really, the work that I'm doing with you and the work that I've been doing for the last 20 is so important. It's to help all Latinos, not just one or not just two, because somebody helped me, unfortunately, or fortunately it was, a, it was you know, a non-Latina because there were no Latinas at Arista Records. There were, you know, there were, I, I mean, maybe there was one besides me, but, but paying it forward and mentoring, which is really the work that we're doing within the, the affinity group that we just got done doing this incredible accelerator program with 10 Latino filmmakers, that five week program. And just thinking about how we opened up that program and how it ended and how much growth all of these talented filmmakers, there's, we're, there's a dearth of, of Latino stories and of Latino filmmakers. What we both found and we discussed is that these 10 filmmakers, while they were absolutely incredible, didn't have an uncle inside the studio system that was showing them the way. And they needed that like insight of how you show up in a room, like how, you know, how to present yourself, how to pitch, a, a, you know, your project. And, and, and I was inspired by that experience because I'm thinking, you know what, this is what it is. We just need to help the community and teach them how to navigate the system that, as one of the, as one of the solutions. Yes. And also not only just filmmakers, but um, business people in the entertainment industry, it is pivotal that we have power because that's when the real change will occur. Uh, and the, the, the longstanding change will occur because sometimes they throw us a bone and we think that it's getting better because, whoa, well, look how many of us are on the screen. Okay. That was three more than <laughs> than it was for the past 50 years. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not as satisfied, you know, with just the bone. Thank you very much. You know, so we have to really keep our eye on the prize and understand what the prize is all about. Right. And, and we have to let Hollywood, like we have to not let them know, but we have to keep reminding them of that. The fact that we're not a monolith, right. That a story from East Los Angeles or South Central or Chicago or New Jersey or New York or Dallas, that our experiences are, are all different, whether that's race, I mean, class, right? What, what education backgrounds, like there's so many incredible stories. I'm thinking about a show I'm watching right now on who you call this full. Um, and actually um, the, the participants of this, um, of this conference are gonna, are gonna be able to watch it. It is so good. I don't know if you haven't caught it, but it is a story based, it's Chris Estrada and it's based on his life and stand-up comedy. And it is probably one of the better shows I've seen in the longest time. And I want everybody to watch it. But like, I think about that, like this is a brand new, nobody knew who Chris Estrada was, right? We need, we need to lift up all the Chris Estradas that are out there, all the Frankie Quinones, all the Jenna Ortegas and Sofia Carsons, et cetera. We need to, to lift up all Latino stories, not just one specific Latino story and celebrate the fact that we are as diverse as, you know, not only, you know, that we have our, a diversity of stories and great stories. So anyway, I, 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 I digress there, but I was just thinking about how excited I was to watch that show and for it to be such a, 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 a fresh lens into one sector of our community. And I think we need to see more of that. Yes, and what's also exciting, going back to the accelerator program that we participated on behalf of the Academy, is that the, the difference in the stories that these filmmakers wanted to tell, because there's also a false narrative out in Hollywood that we just want to tell our immigration story and that's it, you know, or our rise out of poverty story. And those stories are important and they are necessary, you know, especially specifically if they come from our lens um, and we're telling it. Um, but they were stories about horror films. There was action stories. There were uh, rom-coms. There were all, it just ran the gamut. And that gave me so, such, such a, a, a wind beneath my wings. I was like, this is really exciting. This is very, very, very exciting. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's important. That kind of work with filmmakers. And then, but also to your point, is to make sure that we have, we're in every room, that we're in every department, not just janitorial, not just accounting, not just DEI, but that we're in every room, every room, you know, the green lighting rooms, the consumer facing decision rooms, and the C-suite on the boards, like 
that's what we need to see um, in Hollywood. And I know that a lot of us are working towards that. Yeah. And, and in regards to working, it's unfortunate on one hand, but you have to not look at it that way. We have to work harder than most. We have to work harder than most. We have to put in the hours. We cannot give up. Um, and we have to deliver great work, great work. If you think about certain movies that are out there that are terrible, and then they give them a sequel, and you go, what, excuse me? <laughs> they have that, that privilege. We do not. We do not. So therefore, we really have to show up and we really have to put in the good work. Yeah, and, and I'm just thinking, what, what, what would you say to the, the folks that are listening to us, right? So they're probably from all over, all over the country, Latino professionals, um, folks that are in philanthropy, folks that are entertainment, tech, tech social, digital, et cetera. Like, what do they have to do? How do they make an impact if they're not in, in this system? But what can they do? Strive for excellence. Don't strive for perfection because it's it's a loser's game. Um, but tr strive for excellence. Know everything about whatever industry that you are involved in or want to get involved in, um, because it it is such it's such an asset to know every single aspect um, of 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 everything because you want. You do not want anyone to take advantage of you. You do not want anyone to give you certain misinformation and you go, oh, oh, well, that door is closed. No, you could say, excuse me, no, it's not. I know how this works. And it's really, really important. Um, even for, let's say, I'll just speak specifically to actors. If I'm given a role, I take it so seriously that I have months of preparation. I, I look into everything. My, my binder is filled just with notes every single day I am working uh, drives my husband crazy because even if I'm making dinner, I'm start, I'm, I'm saying my lines and I'm thinking, Oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do that. I am writing letters of appreciation to directors that I meet, to producers that I meet, to writers I want to work with. I send flowers to actors that I think are fantastic. You want to make sure that you have all doors open to you. And if they're not open, you want to make sure you know how to open it yourself. Right, preach, absolutely, 100%. And, um, you know, I'm because we're, you know, we both are in the Hollywood um, system, and a lot of people say, well, you don't have to create Latino stories because Latinos will go to any movie, right? And it's true, right? We're prolific uh, moviegoers, but, but, but nowadays uh, we're, we're seeing some success in like films like Encanto or Vivo or just specifically Purple Hearts right now on, um, on Netflix, but what can we do to send a message to Hollywood that we do actually want to see ourselves portrayed? And like, what could, if you're, even if you're not in the industry, cause like social, right? Like, like there's a way of letting Hollywood know what you want to see. No, besides, yes. besides obviously the box office. Yeah. Social media is big. If you see a movie, let's say like purple heart, you know, blast the heck out of it on social, let Hollywood know, Oh my gosh, we are watching. They are watching, excuse me. Um, you can um, support by watching, period. I know that sounds trivial, but that's what, that's the biggest, you know, indicator of success. Um, you know, uh, Purple Heart had over 100 million hours of viewing time, 100 million hours of viewing time for YA, a young adult rom-com with two individuals that were not stars. You know, so it's it's don't say that we don't show up for our community. We certainly do. And so do others. And don't say that, well, you'll just give us anything and we'll watch anything. That's not that's not true as well. You know, um, but really, it's it's really the support. You know, if you have an actor, a, a Latino Latinx actor that you really love, send them a tweet. Send them a, a, a TikTok or, or, or an Instagram message and, and tag onto it the um, studio, 
that their project is uh, associated with, you know, hashtag the name of the project along and say, I really liked you in this at that, you know, let's say uh, HBO put out or Showtime put out or what have you, and just really, really keep pushing forward. That's a good point. And, and, and what we can do is if you'd like, and I'm sure, cause I know we're all on social and we love something, we're talking about it to Rosie's point, hashtag, the film tag the studio, the producers, and actually thank them if you really like something and say, I want to see more of this because that's what we need. We need them to hear. So it's not just, oh my God, I'm loving this, but they may not be tagged and they're not getting that message. So it's like, if we can sub direct messages and do a little bit of homework and you can see what's, what's the production company, which is the studio. Like that's how you got, it's like you can help to accelerate this, this situation in Hollywood. So, I mean, I think we all have, um, we all can, can, can participate in this and because, and it is important because content travels, right. And, and has the power to unite us in our common humanity. And we need to see more Latino stories across the globe. We don't want this, these to perpetuate these stereotypes. And, and so it's important. Um, it, there is an impact. It does impact society. Our, the way we are being portrayed impacts how people see us uh, wherever we go. So I think it's really important that we all participate in this and that we all, um, you know, let Hollywood know that we do want to see more. Yeah. And, and um, you know, you know, it's okay to create content uh, of the good, bad and ugly of who we are as human beings, because non Latinos do it all the time. Um, it just has to be great. It has to be really good you know, and, and that will make the biggest difference. And also another difference that I always love to say all the time is people like you, Yvette, you know, having this platform is amazing. Who you are as a business person in the film industry is undeniable. And people should know that so that you can inspire others who, oh, well, I'm not an actress. I'm not a producer. I'm not a filmmaker. Well, there's so many other categories that, that you could check a box in and, and participate. You know, it's that's the business of Hollywood. There's so many business opportunities out there and you should do your homework and check them out. And, um, you know, and, but really what you have done, you know, you, going from the music industry into the studio system into marketing it's it's just really amazing oh thank you i love you for that um but i i love that that's a great great segue to say the following like i know that there are brilliant latinos that are watching us right now from all walks of life if you're not in the entertainment industry come come join us we need you we need more latinos in the entertainment industry we need to be in every single room i know how brilliant you are come to hollywood We'll help you. We, we need you. <laughs> yes. We need accountants. We need lawyers. We need publicists. We need marketing people. We need all of these different aspects. It's, you, you know, money people, financiers, everything, everything, you, you know, um, theater owners, uh, just equipment people who own a, a, a trucking business. You can make a mint in the entertainment industry, immense yeah. people who own catering business says, get into this, you will be working nonstop. You know, it's tough work, but it's also pays a lot. And, and it, it's just really, it's, it's, every time I walk on set and I see my people and my heart just is full, it's just so full, you know? So please do come, need, <laughs> everybody needs to help out. Absolutely. Well, I love talking to you and I'm so happy that I get to do it all the time, but this has been a really nice chat. Um, and I want to thank you for coming and talking to everybody at LTX Quest. Um, I love what, what they're trying to do here and that is to unite us and, um, and unite all Latinos uh, for all walks of life and so that we could uh, make a difference and impact um, our society and our community in a positive way by holding hands and working together. So um, thank you, LT Express, for giving us this opportunity. And um, hasta la vista. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye.